I'm Jake and we're back with another Down and Dirty where we take simple problems and create quick solutions. Today, we're gonna tackle a key rack, so let's get into it. All right, so let's get into the key design. The great thing about this one is that we're not trying to match any dimensions, so we just wanna make it cosmetically look good. So let's go straight to the CAD. So we're gonna start off with a sketch, plain, in a rectangle. We're just gonna draw, draw this arbitrarily in here, make the midpoint. And this is just kind of for stuff later on, I'm gonna make the midpoint the origin on the bottom of the rectangle, just so we can reference things easily. Um, kind of playing with numbers in my head, we're gonna go four inches tall. We're gonna do it 10 inches wide. And um, this is gonna be just the back panel on this part. I do want to draw in two little spots for screws to come through. And so we're going to draw in, actually we're just going to draw in one. We're going to do a mirror. So I'm going to draw in a spot here. We're going to make this 0.25 and we're going to make a little slot that comes off of this that allows the screws to kind of come up. We're gonna make this an eighth inch. Oh, we're gonna make it about 65, which is an eighth inch diameter. We're gonna give this a dimension of 0.25. And then we just need to dimension relatively to the edges. We're gonna call this um, 0.75. And we'll also make this 0.75. Now that we have that, I'm gonna draw a construction line in the middle. This is gonna allow me to mirror this over. We're gonna mirror. I'm gonna just kind of window select these and mirror it over. So now we have that same feature on the opposite side. I can add sheet metal now, a flange. We're gonna select this. We're gonna use a new component. I typically always do new components when I do bendings just so that I can assign different bend sheet metal rules. Um, if I have multiple components. We're gonna use 63 thousandths, click OK. So now we have this the back panel. What we're gonna do now is I want to create the little flange that the keys are gonna sit on. So we're gonna make essentially a two bend system here. I'm gonna go out, let's say an inch, and then I'm gonna add one more bend up, but we're gonna make this one half an inch and we're gonna make it 45 degrees just something to hold the keys on. All right, now what we need to do is make each individual groove for our keys to sit in. And we want about, I don't know, five to eight. So we're just gonna kind of make a pattern here. And we're gonna start by going to our sheet metal. We're gonna modify and unfold our design. Click on the back here and unfold all bends. What this does is now it creates a flat pattern of our stuff that we can easily modify and then refold later on. So we're gonna create a sketch on the surface now that it's flat. And I'm going to, uh, we need to project this outer surface. So since these are multiple bends, they're not actually on the surface anymore. So if we create a sketch here, it doesn't incorporate anything below this line. So let's go ahead and project down here so we have something to select. And I want to make my individual tabs a half of an inch. So we're gonna make this tab half an inch, 0.5. That looks pretty good. And we're gonna make another one here. And since we know that this is 10 inches overall um, and we want to go half inch, half inch, half inch, then that's going to end up determining our pattern here. So we can do a rectangular pattern. And we can actually go and do bend ex or our extent. We can go 10 inches on this.
or 9.5, I guess, because we're counting our inner. And then we can increase our numbers until we have the desired amount that we want. So let's just do eight, a nice even number. Here. So now we can do an extrusion. We're gonna extrude through on these, and this is gonna leave our outer fingers here. Through. That looks pretty good. What we're probably gonna wanna do is actually, on each individual one, I think we're gonna wanna create like a little bend relief. So I'm gonna create a little half circle on each one of these. And that'll add a relief so we don't get a weird distortion here on each one of these bends. So we're gonna come back in and make another sketch. And then I'm going to click here. And there should be a center point on each one of these, which makes it nice and easy for us to grab onto. Now we can do that extrusion. I could have also gone back and edited the last one and added this to the pattern and I wouldn't have had to do this much work. So if it was more than eight, I probably would have done that. So now we have a little bit nicer look. I can go ahead and come back to my sheet metal, click on refold, and we can see here now we have eight individual key holders um, with the bend relief in it. The last thing is we're gonna add a little bit of flair by kind of clicking on the back here and adding a text to it. So I can draw an arbitrary square in here, and we need to make sure that when we do text in these, that we're not having any, like an A with a center point that's gonna fall through and create a hole. So everything needs to be webbed in. Um, stencils, typically the best one to use um, because it's already webbed in um, for that purpose. We're gonna click okay. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and make this midpoint here and um, another midpoint here and here. What this does is it kind of just centers our keys in here. We can double click this. We can change our size on this if we wanted to. We can make it a little bit bigger. Click extrude. We're gonna select our surface and we can select um, all. Flipping it around. So we click okay. So now we have a cut through keys. We're ready to go. Let's add a couple rounding features and then we'll finish off with creating our DXF. So we're gonna create these fillets here, fillet here, and then the painstaking process of kind of doing all of these guys. So as we click through these, I think the last time I had a face selected, so we're just kind of redoing this a little bit quicker. And I think we got one more here. Okay, so now, oh yeah, that looks a lot better. So if we look at and we add a 0.25 radius, that's gonna full radius these bottom corners. It still gives us a tangent, tangent face for our bend team to create those bends for you and then it also creates a nice clean look. So we are ready to go. I think I'm ready. All we have to do now is sheet metal, create a flat pattern, click OK, and here we go. Got our flat pattern. Let's go ahead and create our DXF and take it to the website. 
I went ahead and drug that DXF into my down and dirty folder. So let's assign a material property to it in the bends. So we're gonna go ahead and select metal, aluminum, 5052, 63 thousandths. Click next. And for bends on this one, we're gonna see a lot of bends come through. There's two different ways you can do this. You can individually assign these bends, or if you have a good DXF editor, we can actually delete these ones and, and pull that full bend all the way across to bring it down to two individual bends. For this type here, we're gonna go ahead and just assign each individual one. We can check our 3D and we can see here, it's exactly like we had it in the CAD. We do have to make sure that it is the right direction because if it's bent the down way on this one, then keys would actually be spelled backwards, right? So it's important to remember our orientation. Click add bends, add to cart, and we're ready to go. So let's take it to manufacturing floor. And that's what I call a down and dirty key holder. For more information on bending and other material details, check out the links below. Thanks for watching, stay tuned for more.